All right, I did it again. Too, took too long on the break. Let's start tightening up a little bit. Have been going crazy in the first two parts of this uh, series with suited hands. Those are just way too far apart for me though, especially that early in position. Let's see, then I'd be facing that raise. Good fold, good fold. By the way, if this is your first time watching one of the videos, welcome to the Digital Poker Felt. Uh, make sure to join the tribe, the, the Felt tribe itself, by hitting the subscribe button. I'm Fingers. I'm not a professional poker player. Um, Semi-amateur? <laughs> semi-pro. There was a period of time in my life when I did make some extra money on the side. Now, I seem to lose some money on the side now. Uh, have been running bad quite a bit for quite a while. I mean, there's been some big scores here and there. Like, I did make some good money off of the horse tournament, the first one they had at the Derby. But right now, uh, my official title is Unemployed Radio Guy. But what I'm doing with the, these video series, whether it's these deep stacks or the one tables or the Omaha High Low, any of these type of games, these videos are put out for your entertainment, your consumption. If you enjoy poker, you want to learn more about poker, we can learn together. Like, if you question one of the plays I make. Like, if you were watching part two, the very end, there was a bluff. Uh, I don't even want to say it was a full bluff. I, I knew I'd get called by anyone with a king in their hand. <clears throat> but I had a pair of tens by the river. If I had pulled the trigger... These deep stack tournaments I'm playing in, they're for $3 buy-ins. They're still re-entries. Could I have gotten this guy over here with his jack-10 to fold if I had bet bigger? Or pulled the third barrel bluff on the river? That I doubt. And then I would have been back to almost starting stack. So I pulled off... Uh, somewhat of a questionable bluff trying to get another 10 to fold but since he did not fold on the turn nor did he I, I don't know what he even had his hand did not show uh, I checked it down on the river obviously lost the pot but a smaller pot than if I had tried to run another bluff if you disagree if you think I should have pulled the trigger there just blasted all my chips in, or at least all of his. Especially with him being... Wait, he's not even the same guy. They've moved the guy that was there. Because the guy that was there, I did have a note on him. Oh, no, wait. They didn't move him. They moved me. I'm on a new table. None of these people have notes. Alright, it's a connector, but not suited. Let's try and play smart. Let's see how far and how deep we can go in this tournament. Again, being a $3 buy-in with these tournaments, the level of play is not exceptional, but it allows us to play around. This tournament starts with over 88,000 as your starting stack. They call it the Crazy 8. Wait a second. I can... Let me move that down a little bit so we can get the anti-info in, in there. So, yeah, let's see. If I go to the lobby... Do, do, do. So far, 371 people have registered. It can max out at 5,000. The guarantee is over... Yeah, over $2,000 for the prize pool. So right now, 
if no one else registered, the tournament was closed at this moment, and we were to take first place for a three dollar buy-in, you win over a hundred times your entry. Obviously, it's not closed yet. It'll continue. It'll probably be somewhere closer to the 300 as it spreads out deeper right now. Uh, let's see, what was it, 300-something or 400-something? No, we're not going to play that, so let's go back to the lobby. So how many people were in this again? 375, so... If it were a real live tournament, it would probably pay 40 deep. My computer's lagging a little bit right now. Let's see how far down. 81. Well, that's a little difference between a live tournament and an online tournament. I actually thought this. It would move it much further, deeper into payouts online, but right now, no, it's only 81. Oh wait, no, that is, that's more than, what am I thinking? Yeah, I said it would only pay 40 live. Or if it were live, they'd bunch a lot more of the payouts up front. So yeah, it should technically be easier to cash online. The drawbacks to an online poker tournament is you don't have the physical tells of looking at somebody. This site, I'm operating it through not a downloaded piece of software, but a web browser. I'm not promoting them. Again, not registered or unregulated, I guess, would be the proper term in the uh, U.S. In Florida, again, I live in the Tampa Bay area, we do not have an online option, so I'm choosing to do this. I'm not spending a great deal of money because untrustworthy online sites, not regulated in the U.S., who knows if I'll ever get my money back, but it's fun three dollars here and there if I ever did score big then I'll have to worry about how to get the money out and I believe there are other videos out there on YouTube if I can find one tell you what I will look up one that tells you how to get the money out of these type of sites through Bitcoin I'll include that link down in the description so that way if you choose on your own to play on this site or one of the other unregulated sites in the U.S. and you wanted to figure out how to get your winnings out and get them into your bank account, I will include that link again in the description. Make sure though to also click on the like button for this video and the other videos in this series or every video you come across that says Digital Poker Felt, smash that like button. Also make sure to subscribe, that way you know when the next video comes out. Now that's, that's a raise. Well, we were going to play until that happened. Oh, but getting back to the software. Yes, you're anonymous on here. I don't think you can use any HUDs if that's what you're familiar with doing. Like the good old days of the poker stars and the full tilt and all that. This running through a browser instead of downloaded software and anonymous players. I do not think it would allow you to use a HUD. Currently the theme of these videos is that I'm trying to play GTO preflop off the charts. I'm not using a problem solver or anything like that though. So all the decisions, even as far as the GTO preflop, 
I can choose as a human being to ignore the charts if I wanted. So he raised and he went that big earlier with just an ace 10. Hang on, let me make a note before he gets eliminated. of his idiocy again being a three dollar tournament who knows maybe somebody like this is a better player than this and he's just in here shoving his chips in over and over again trying to build a big stack knowing that in this tournament that they allow you to rebuy up to 25 levels deep into it i chose based on trying to provide you with the best content available giving you the full overview of the tournament. I got into it immediately when the tournament started. If you were watching part one of the series, you know that I did bust once already. I did rebuy. And if you were watching part two, I believe is when we did get lucky. No, I'm not gonna turn this into a game of bingo. Let him do that. these other weak players call him what did he call him with last hand like king nine well at least he's isolating he might actually have a hand yep yeah. and he gets lucky again I wonder if that'll be good enough for him to stop shoving I'm not going to dick around with my suited cards right now with the maniacs shoving. This raising here, I definitely do not want to face 46,000 behind it. Um. Getting back to this tournament in particular, this site runs it, I, I think, daily at like 508. It's called Crazy 8. They give you 88,888 chips to start with. The blind levels run every eight minutes before they go up. And in the online world, I guess, a little better than a turbo. And as you saw earlier, if you were watching when I looked at the lobby, the guaranteed prize pool is 2,088. So again, they play a lot of 88s into it. It starts at 5.08 p.m. Eastern Time. With all the 8s going on, I don't know why they don't start it at 8.08. If you really wanted to keep the theme alive. Maybe, again, this is just a thought off the top of my head. Wherever the server is, maybe it's 8 o'clock something. Maybe it's 8 to 8 a.m. somewhere, wherever the server lies for that. And I'm just looking at it through the lens of my Eastern time. Maybe there is more theme than I even know. But while you're watching these videos, if you enjoy them, again, make sure to like them. I told you I'm going to give you more details down below with a link to a video uh, about Bitcoin cashing out of sites like this. Also, while you're at it, though, not just subscribing here, but we also have a fan page on Facebook, The Digital Poker Felt. Make sure to look that up. Click on the like, follow, all that type of stuff. we got some funny memes going on in addition to little short videos of this and that. A gathering place where we can share more info, not just here. Let me see. I 
hate how the browser does this. Get back into place. Big blinds now up to 800. We're down at the 200 big blind mark of our depth. So as far as the GTO, Game Theory Optimal Poker, playing at preflop, I've got some preflop charts. Again, I'm not using any other software, just referencing this type of stuff. I have not really been paying that much attention to it because of how deep we were, we've been running in this tournament. Again, you start off with over 1,700 big blinds starting this tournament. But as we get closer down to the 100 or 80 big blinds, I will definitely be focusing more on the advice of the charts. And again, I say the advice because I have been known to go off track with the charts, go with what I feel, the human element of it for me. And maybe, maybe this is a flaw of mine. Maybe. Because there are some times that maybe win or lose if the chart says pull the trigger here and shove all your chips in. Maybe, again, playing GTO, I should go with it. Oh, sorry about that. Receiving texts from people looking for a guy that rolls, hand rolls cigars for an event. I hate group texts. Alright, that brings us down to 165 big blinds. So yeah, sorry for the distraction. Real quick, let's see. Registered. 409 is now. How many are still in? Average. Why is it telling me this now? We're still connected. Come on. Get down there. Breaks for hands. Hand for hand. This tells how many. Where's the total? Hmm. Okay, I thought it would. And we know over 400 people have joined. I just don't know how many people are left. Because of how loosey-goosey people have been with their entire stacks right here, I'm not going to go crazy. He could still have any pair there. Let's say if he had pocket sevens even, he's still good. He doesn't necessarily need the nine or the three. If he has an ace, even ace king, we're chopping now. If he has ace ten, we're not. Why would you check there? Just put in a small bet.
And more than likely we had the best hand. I mean, even if he had ace-king there, maybe he's afraid of the ten, the nine. I was calling him on every street. My apologies, again, getting distracted. More people texting me about cigars for some reason at this hour. And no, I do not work in the cigar industry. I just happen to live in Tampa. So I guess that's the big topic. Rainbow, we got the gut shot. No raises pre-flop. There's no reason to think we would have the ace, so we can't really bet it. He was the guy that overplayed ace-10 before, though. But he could easily limp in, I guess, with a weaker ace? I don't want to play the guessing game. Let's see if I call that. Look at a pot that's going to be almost 15,000. If he bet 15,000 on the turn, then he's going to get it all in on the river. That would just be painful. We would have to hit perfect. I guess if we were paying attention to the GTO preflop charts, even at 80 big blinds, if we were to raise first in, obviously we wouldn't be raising first in with this guy, but with a hand like this even, queen nine offsuit from the button, if it had folded around to us, with a shorter stack than this compared to the, the blinds, it would be a the charts would be advising to actually raise there with that hand. And we know the charts love suited hands. And I actually like raising with them, but as crazy as he's been, I don't want to open it up for another shove or raise in my face. I definitely want to try and see a flop with this hand, if these people will let me. Oh, we caught a little tiny piece of that flop. We also have the backdoor flush draw. Betting three and a seven, he's calling. Hmm. Well, there goes the browser again. So I have to call three to win 16. Now I've got the flush draw. Why would he check there then? Five to one on my money. Or no. Yeah, all right, I got the flush. As long as somebody else didn't back into a bigger one. <clears throat> Let's try to max out value. I 
Yeah, I didn't think they'd call, but in case they would, I wanted to get the max chips in there that I could possibly get from them. Maybe if I had actually bet more, if I had gone all in, they'd think I was bluffing more so. All right, the last time he bet a hand like that, he had ace 10. Let's apply the pressure instead of just being a wuss and backing out. What the? Sorry for that. Other videos popping up in the background while I'm sitting here playing this one. Oh, I think that was part two actually rendering in the background. That was its version of it's done. So the guy didn't even have a hand as good as Ace-10 there. Let's see, if I open up this... No, I don't want that. Oops. Ah, here we go. 71st out of 254. There's the average. That's where the info is that I was looking for. All right, we got a gut shot. Let's see, there's just three of us. Betting small was a way to keep draws in, or a worse hand. But also I see it as a way where if he raises me, still keeps the pot small enough for me to call and suck out on him on the turn. Perfect. All right, I think we expended enough luck in the last hand. Let's not push it with a, a seven tray. And let's see, that's one big blind. So button will be there next. Small big, I'll be under the gun. If you're new to poker, uh, definitely your hand ranges should be much tighter, whether under the gun or in any early position. As your position moves back towards the button, that's where your range is. You can play a much wider range of hands. With or without GTO charts. Just You have so many other people to play after you. But, what's to stop us from being the maniac at the table? Got my suited hand, and it also makes my hand appear so much bigger by raising in this position. 
if somebody else re-raises, that means they have to have a monster. Let's see, that's a new player up there. See if we can get our draw again or get them to fold. Ah, making him think. Wondering what he could have been thinking about. Maybe he had a jack or a ten. Oh, good. We finally have a stack that people are afraid of. As I was saying earlier, having a much tighter range in the early position, you can't get much earlier than small blind. But, especially with people limping in, inflating the size of the pot, and you're getting a discount, your range actually can be quite wide here as long as you're not calling raises and re-raises. Again, the pot's already... Uh, 8100 and it's only costing me 750 to get in here caught a piece of it but we're five way Too many people to act after me. Flush draw, straight draws, queen, better sevens. He's betting half pot he's calling, so I don't even want to chase with that. <laughs> Raising calls after it. There you go. Now that's a raise. That's like a cockadile uh, Dundee raise. And he gets there. Noticing a little bit of lag going on with the screen. I'm hoping it's not affecting the recording. All right, it's eight six off suit. Big blind is sitting out. Let's get the small blind out too. Said I'm experiencing some lag right now. There you go. We're finally hitting a level in the tournament where some bluffs are working. And 
now we're getting back to our suited connectors. The other site we were using to create these videos, again, I don't want to name this site or the other one. Let's just say the other unregulated site that I was that I am using. You're able to see its depth of stack based on big blinds, but you can also see where people, not just their nicknames online, but what country they're uh, residing in. All right, you're going to get punished again for limping. And there you go. That's a hand that should hit me perfectly. It was worth a try. Cut our losses. Not all of them have to work. I mean, a hand like that, I would have probably played the same way if I had pocket jacks, tens. So if he called my raise with any kind of ace, he got there <clears throat> and my bluff did not work. He also could have uh, been playing loosey-goosey with jack ten. Who knows? Got there on the river. I mean, how many times have we gotten there on the river today? It happens. The river happens. I was just thinking you should, we could probably come up with a t-shirt that if you don't get it in bad, you're never, you're missing out on like half the wins or something like that. Everybody gets so upset that I had the best hand pre-flop. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It matters when you get to uh, showdown. As I was saying in part two, come up with a nickname for a lot. And again, I want to say that it's usually these older gentlemen that have acquired this nickname from me. But it's not necessarily just a male thing. There are a certain quantity of females that have this nickname also. And the nickname I've come up with for them are Grumble <laughs> They're just miserable old people that just sit there and they want to just whine and complain because they had the best hand and you sucked out or for whatever. Some of them, I've actually seen some that win the pot and still complain. So again, as far as unregulated and being only for $3, right now I'm at home on my couch and I don't have to hear any of the comments. I don't even have the chat open. So if somebody wanted to complain about me getting lucky or for whatever reason. I don't have to listen to it. So there's one uh, plus I can give you. Hmm.
don't think I necessarily want to get the stacks in. Hmm. I did want to isolate. Well, I'm pretty sure under the gun has a pair. Under the gun plus one might have a bigger pair. I'm going to get out of the way with what we'll call is just a big connector. Yeah. Don't want to make a habit of laying that down. Let's go back to the min rays. Not suited, but we could do some damage. I don't want to be greedy, but instead of a straight, if it could just come out 10, 10, 9. That does not look like a 10, 10, 9 at all. again. Somebody first. Average. Come on, close now. Does it show stats of how many hands I'm playing or any of that? No, no stats. Other than average and where we stand. Alright, 271 people still in it. We're getting close to the three hour mark in this tournament. Next break is eight minutes away. Again, at that time, as I've instructed before in previous videos, but again, if this is your first time stumbling upon one of the videos, I'm going to reiterate that I break them up into one hour segments. So every time the tournament takes a break, I, I call that the end of that video. Keep everything more manageable. Because again, I have no idea how deep, how long I'm going to be in this tournament. I'm going to play it till I bust. I have rebought the one time. I'm definitely, at these level of blinds, not going to rebuy again. So if I bust, that's it. If I go deep and cash, or get to the final table and actually win it. You know, either way, I do not know the outcome of this tournament, so I have to definitely hmm, just chop it up for your convenience and mine. That was a weird loose call. What did he have? Something like ace high? Uh, let's see, big blinds are 2,000 now. We're at 33. 
333,000. So we're still well over 100 big blinds. We're 166. I mean, I am glancing over at the charts every now and then by this point, but I'm still nowhere <clears throat> near the 80 big blinds. So I can definitely play a looser than the GTO preflop charts at this point. But if you've noticed, I have been tightening up a bit from when we were 1700 big blinds deep. And he called. What? <laughs> Counterfeited. I'm wondering if this lag is the browser itself, because again, it's got that warning saying it's eating up significant energy. All right, that guy overplayed his twos. I was going to raise. Let's just play it slow, keep things small. Could bet that way with a queen because there were no raises pre flop. Or we could be significantly behind with our ace. What the heck? Two, a four. It's the only guarantee we have. And we, there's actually only two fours that are guaranteed. The other two could get flushes. All right, I'll be a net. Now. Ace five is good with a boat. Ace king is still good with two pair because the king's better than the queen. But would he limp with an ace king? So more than likely, aces and fives with a queen we would have chopped. If that guy had not called, it probably would have been more likely to gamble with that guy all the way to the river. Don't limp. All right, good boy. too big. Let's make it 6,000. Eh, even that. Oh no, I guess. Eh, it worked. Five, six. Yeah, we could have gone a little more than six. So six is fine.
click that, will it speed up the lag on me? Again, I apologize if the lag, if you're seeing it too, if it's impacting you. I don't have any other tabs open. This is it. And I have asked this in the past. I've wondered if maybe if I downloaded the software instead of doing the browser version, maybe that would help. I did have that tournament. What was it last week or the week before playing on the other site? Or no, actually it was, yeah, playing on the other site where the other software I originally started off filming these videos, they, uh, it did not like the whole re-entry, rebuy, switching tables, and that caused a big mess. So that's why I've created this frame, changed the way I've done a lot of the different things. There's 6,000 before, 7, 8, let's just do 10,000. Punish the limper. Is Mr. Deuce is going to get involved? Yep. All right. Uh, if he's got aces or kings. Uh, he likes to overplay those small pairs. All right, that does it for part three. Again, if you want to be notified when part four comes out, Make sure to click on the subscribe, the notifications, smash the like buttons, do all that kind of stuff. Get engaged in the comments down below. And as I promise, I'm going to put in a, a link to another video with someone discussing how to do the whole Bitcoin cashing out, that type of stuff. So again, get on it with the notifications. Also follow us on Facebook. I appreciate every single one of you that follows Digital Poker Felt. See you again for part four.